Check out more cool videos at thecutup.net. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash thecutup. Okay, everyone. Places. Places. Oops. Action. Every summer usually contains several what are deemed blockbuster movies. Movies meant to be action-packed and explosion-filled, but above all, make a metric shit ton of money. Among these action films, it's usually rare for one of them to have a decent followable story too. But X-Men First Class pulls it off, and it's actually a little more gentle and probable with the X-Men lore than the previous trilogy, even if it does take some questionable liberties and continues to use the X-Men trilogy as a base. I wasn't looking forward to X-Men First Class really at all. When I saw the trailer, I wasn't impressed, and it looked pretty boring. And judging by how the past trilogy was, I thought it was going to be crap. To my surprise, X-Men First Class wasn't only entertaining, but also carried a decently told story, with some decent acting. Both in one comic book movie? Go on. X-Men First Class is basically the story of Professor Xavier and Magneto. How they became friends, how they became enemies, and how they take out Sebastian Shaw and his crew. The two actors playing Xavier and Magneto, James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, are amazing and again, like Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen from the first trilogy, portray the excellent bond that they share. A lot of the movie is story and setup until Xavier starts to put together the first team of X-Men. The team is varied as they show a montage of collecting mutants and include a cameo from a character I'm sure everyone will enjoy except me because I don't really understand how it fits in with the trilogy continuity. Sorry, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it doesn't make sense. Then the team is concocted and made up of some familiar and not so familiar faces. This is where continuity will make or break the film for you as the movie seems to use the X-Men trilogy as a base. So First Class doesn't have Cyclops and Jean Grey as they were already in the trilogy. This doesn't bother me too much, as I've stated before, comics have spin-offs, and I consider the movies to be spin-offs as well. As far as the first team goes, you get Banshee, Havoc, Beast, Mystique, uh, Angel? Yeah, the girl one. I don't know. And there's a few others. The kids all do an alright job. But Zoe Kravitz was a standout for lameness as Angel. I don't know if it was her or the character, but a former stripper that spits? And there's no innuendo there? Come on. All of them feel awkward about what they're doing, but Xavier teaches them to hone their powers, including Magneto's. You'll see Banshee harness his scream. You'll see Beast try to come to terms with his... weird feet. You'll see Magneto turn a gigantic tower, which is awesome. And it's exciting for comic book nerds and moviegoers alike. And of course, all of the kids feel awkward about what they are. They constantly talk about being different and being ridiculed for it. But I'd rather see it and not be told about it. It makes character motivation a bit confusing when you haven't seen what the opposing force is that they're dealing with. Sure, they look weird, but who was teasing them? I don't know, show them get into a fight together at a diner or something. Show it, don't say it. And you'd think that this would be emphasized more considering that's how all the X-Men choose sides. This dislike for how they're different though leads Beast to turn blue and grow fur. This is different from the comics, but it's creative and justifiable. Another character related point I wasn't sure on was with Mystique. Was she always going after so many dudes in the comics? She's with Xavier, but is kissing on Beast and Magneto? Control yourself, girl! And how hard would it have been to make McTaggart Scottish? Is that really a big deal? I also wanted to point out how hot January Jones is as Emma Frost, but also how boring. She's trying to keep some kind of weird composure, but it doesn't work. However, it was cool to see Kevin Bacon in a movie. I haven't seen him in a new one in a while. Anyway, I'm ranting now. This is a decent comic book movie with an emphasis on Xavier's and Magneto's relationship. Really, that's the reason this movie needs to be seen, is because of the great relationship between Xavier and Magneto. It's just great to see a comic book action movie that's not afraid to blow shit up or pull a submarine out of the ocean or to make you tear up a little bit. Looking for excitement, but maybe a little drama in your summer blockbuster? I would recommend attending X-Men First Class. Alright guys, that's a wrap. Oops.